et shalom. Kalalali Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Rakakodash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of the great millstone, and all the elders who rule well. Peace and salutations to the brothers, the Akiyam pushing this truth through the four corners of the earth, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered, respectable Buddhist Israelites, I say Shalom, and I say Shalom to the few and faithful Akwats, the sisters, listening and learning. This is your brother, Yerushalam, coming at you with another video, video right? To the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahushai, Basham Rakakodash. Alright, um, now this lesson basically will be about um, COVID 19, you know, and the, and the widening of the, and the causes of um, the resulting factors, Salakia, of COVID 19, you know, me being that widens the gap between the rich and the poor, right? Which is a plan of, of Esau anyway, you know. So let me go to the first scripture here. This is the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, right? Which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And this is, I mean, first and foremost, you know, Esau is the one who loves money more than anybody. But, you know, you also have Jakes too, you know. You know, sell out Jakes, you know, who, 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 um, who love money, you know, and they, get, they basically get bought over from Esau, right? So... I'm going to go into a video here now, you know, basically, and then I'll let's break down some scriptures. Over a million people across the globe have died from coronavirus-related causes. As billions more continue to struggle with the pandemic's economic consequences, things are looking up for the world's billionaire minority. For the first time ever, their collective wealth has surpassed $10 trillion. And... and it's past 10 trillion dollars right the global elite look at the faces on this on this list you see bill gates you see a lot of these guys you know these these um these elites and you know and you know the you know the rich charlie rockefeller the did you know the banking families that they will you know they're just getting richer and richer with this covid 19 you know? it's all a plan too right so they say billionaires net worth over 10 trillion you know and they're just talking about the billionaires what about the people who are really trillionaires right what about the Roch, Rothschild, the Oppenheimers, right? They're, they're already trillionaires. So, so how much money did they get? Right? 10.2 trillion. Right? From COVID-19. Billionaire wealth equates to a fortune almost impossible to spend over multiple lifetimes of absolute luxury. Any so, so they have so much money, it's impossible. Surpassed $10 trillion. Billionaire wealth equates to a fortune. So if billionaire wealth equates to a fortune, almost impossible to spend over multiple lifetimes. That's how rich these people are. That's how much money they accumulate, right? You know, and, and you know, lifetimes, multiple lifetimes of absolute luxury, which means it's not just normal lifetimes, right? Not just eating what you have, but literally, you know, you know, it's gener that that's ridiculous amount of generational wealth that's built up, right? You know, and how it was built up, you know, of the sweat, blood, and tears of, our, of us Israelites, all right? You know, so they, they like to live in luxury for lifetimes, right? They don't even have to, you know, push it anymore, all right? But they still want more, you know, they never have enough. They will never have enough, all right? So when you say luxury, let's go into our scripture here in the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 7, right? This is Revelation 18 and 7. How much she hath glorified herself. And live deliciously. Alright? And when you go into that word deliciously, what does it mean? You know? Strong's G 4763. Straniao. Straniao. Yes, straniao, right? Straniao. You know? Alright, and it means, um, to be wanton, to live deliciously, right? Luxuriously, Slacky, right? So they live, it's luxurious living. You know, these Edomites, they've lived luxuriously, right? Off of us, you know? So how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow, you know? And the only way 
they can really continue with this wickedness, you know, as if they really believe that, you know, their, sister, their kingdom is not going to end. You know, they believe somehow they can overcome the Mosai, you know, and they'll survive. And you see that in the book of, um, when we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and verse 11, right? Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their, na their lands after their own names, and that does is Edomites, right? You know, Africa, you know, in America, right? America, Vespucci, Africa, um, I think it's believe it's Sipio Africanus, right? So, you know, they call their lands after their own names, you know, and, and you know, they believe that their dwelling places will continue for all generations, and that's why they reap, and they heaping up all this wealth, right? So, so it's a lot of, there's a lot of wickedness, you know, is going on. That's what's going on. Let's um look for a scripture here. In alright. Habakkuk 2. I believe I'll read from verse 4. Right? And this is this is this is regarding these elites, right? Habakkuk 2 and 4 say, Behold his soul which is lifted up, lifted up and is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it at home, right? Who enlarged his desire as hell, and is as debt, and cannot be satisfied. So, you know, you know, when we're looking in the video here, they were saying um, that basically, um, let me see if I can put it. Oh, they were saying that is, um, the, the billionaire wealth equates to a fortune almost impossible to spend over multiple lifetimes of absolute luxury. So... You know, the multiple lifetime, the multiple generations, right? Right? You know? Who you know when, and they can't they can never have enough. They can never have enough. Alright? So neither keep it at home who enlarges his desire as hell and is as debt. Right? So a lot of people will be out of out of jobs, you know, what was was left for them. They can't eat, you know. They can't drink, you know. So he saw his debt, right? And cannot be satisfied. Right? They cannot be satisfied, so they just want more and more. Right? But gather it unto him all nations and he better unto him all people. You know, and and you know, they can never have enough. It comes like in um if you go to the book of Obadiah. Book of Obadiah, chapter one. And and verse let me see if I can, let me see if I can find this thing here. Alright. So lucky, just give me a moment. All right. Yeah. Yeah, verse 5. Oh, but I want 5, you know, because, you know, if a thief broke into your house, you know, they would just take, you know, basically what, what, um, what they want, you know, you know, enough as they want. But Esau wants everything. All right. So this is I have 1 and 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how, how art thou cut off? And would they have not stolen till they had enough? Right? So that's what a normal thief would do, steal until they had enough. If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Yeah, they would, they would leave some of the grapes for you, but Esau now doesn't leave anything. He wants everything for himself. Alright? He wants everything for himself. But your Lord is exposing them, right? And that leads us in next script, next verse, you know, verse um, Obadiah 1 and 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up, you know, and all praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that we have this knowledge and understanding, alright? So, so let's, um, let's pop back to, let's go back to the video. Impossible to spend over multiple lifetimes of absolute luxury. Anyone accumulating riches on this scale could easily afford to raise the pay of the employees. Yeah, you know, you know they, could, they could easily raise the pay of the staff and help them. All right, but they refuse because why they want everything they don't want some they want all all right who generate their wealth or contribute a great deal more in taxes to support vital public services and all the while jobs are you know, just the opposite you know they, they get tax breaks right and you know and reduce tax and sanctions and you know so it's, it's, so it's only a small man a so-called small man you know the Israelite man and the poor of the other nations basically who hold the burden disappearing at an alarming rate the yeah, 
Jobs disappeared. Richer, while millions of people around the world lost their jobs. That's not a coincidence. That's how their rotten system works. Yeah, yeah, that's how the rotten system works. You know? And that's why, that's why Babylon is destroyed, right? You know, the whole economy is a mess. Alright, let's go to our scripture here. In the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah here. Find this select here. Jeremiah chapter 51. And verse 7, Jeremiah 51 and 7, right? Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations have drunken and wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed, and that's what's going on right now. The economy is in shambles, you know, jobs being lost, right? You know, and we'll see that a little later down in the video. You know, and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her, right? For her pain. If so, she may be healed. And that bomb is going into the what? To what? The stimulus money that, they, that they're given. Alright? But the stimulus money that they're given is mainly to help the elites. Elites, you know, and the companies survive. Alright? To so ride out the storm. Alright? Verse 9 says, We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. So, you know, that judgment is really serious, you know. It's getting worse and worse, and we haven't seen everything yet. Alright? So the super rich just keep on getting richer and richer while the masses around the world, you know, they lose their jobs, right? And as you said, it's a rotten system of the elites, right? And it's another coincidence, you know, it's planned by them. It's plan it's all planned. Alright? It's all a big plot. Alright, and it's an age, it's a centuries old plot too. This is Psalm 64 and 5, right? You know, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune by laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? And this is going into the Illuminati, right? The secret societies, all right? This is going into that. You know, what they believe, what, what, what is founded on, all right? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep, all right? So, so they, they accomplish a diligent. They sit down and plan this thing. Detail, you know? They sit down on their beds and plan this stuff, all right? That's what they do. Right? But the scripture says, But Yahweh shall shoot at them with an arrow, suddenly they shall be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves, all that see them shall flee away. Yeah, and you know, and, and the tongue is falling on itself, because you know, all of these, even you know, so the Edomites, even is, are bringing it out, you know, and, and you know, exposing them. Right? All of the wickedness that they, that they work on their beds. Right? This is Micah 2 and verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity. And work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice. And this beds is talking about the, the secret society, the chambers, right? Where they, where the tables, where they plan this thing. Where they plan their wickedness and, and unrighteousness. You know? Because it is in the power of the of the of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. And whose heritage they oppress? Jake's Jacob's heritage, Israel. Right? Right? Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, behold, against this family, notice he says family, right? Because it's a family of people, especially the lead tribe, which is Amalek, lead tribe of Esau Edom. You know, most of most of these um these elites come from that family. It's a family. Even the presidents of the United States, you know, all except one I believe are related. Alright? It's a family, right? So the Lord said, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil from which Ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for the time is evil. I know Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh is the king of terror, so he will live up to his promise. You know, whatever he says will come to pass. It comes in the fullness. The, Psalm 40 and 7 say, Lo, I become in the, in the fullness of the book, it is written of me. Alright, so the volume of the book is like, yeah, so at the end of the day, you know, whatever the Lord says, it is going to come to pass. Alright? And, and to be honest, to be honest, Jake, Jake especially, right? It, it, you know, Jake being in this situation of being jobless, you know, and that goes back to the curses. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse forty-four. Forty-four says, um, yeah, it's Deuteronomy twenty-eight and forty-four. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail, and 
And a lot of time, you know, the reason why, you know, Jake is destroyed like this is because of the amount of debt. You know, we taking debt. We, they lend into us and we taking on debt. All right? Verse 17 say, um, verse 17 says, uh, to Jeremiah 20 and 17, Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store, you know. So nothing will be, will be endeavored to do. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mix, it's going to um, come to fruition. All right? So, Literally, we cursed in terms of like that, you know, because Jake doesn't have to own too many businesses or anything like that, you know. But we always have to borrow in a high debt, you know, either from credit cards, loans, um, different mortgages, you know. We we highly geared, we you know, we highly indebted, you know, and you know, and that's something to that, you know, in this time as well, for the for you know for the hopefully elect, you know, in, in as much as possible, you try to reduce your debt, pay expenses and whatnot, you know. Make sure that you you know your your leverage or your debt level is reduced. Alright, for this time. Alright. I'm gonna go into another scripture into the, in the Apocrypha. Alright, this is the book of um Ecclesiasticus. We call it Sirach. Chapter 18 and verse 33. Alright, the Sirach 18 and 33. Alright. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. Alright, so a lot of Jake now, you know, is, is, is banqueting on borrowing, right? Right, and making himself a beggar because the bank end up owning you. The, the, the interest rates on the credit card, right? You know, you, every time you have the card, it's a temptation to use it, right? Instead of having, you know, and instead of having the discipline to say no, you know, and just use it for whatever you have to do and be able to pay back for it, whatever you really and truly need to, to, to use it for as an emergency, right? When thou hast nothing in thy purse, right? So I'm going to read it over Salakia. Like this is Ecclesiastes 18 and 33. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. When thou hast nothing in thy purse, because you have no money in your purse to pay back. Alright? But you only, you're living off of borrowings, right? Taking borrowing and not lending, right? For thou shalt lie in wait for thy own life. Alright? Because you're lying in wait, what you lying in wait for? You're lying in wait for your own life. You become a beggar. Alright? You become a beggar because you know you're looking, you gotta wait for handouts, and that's what happened to a lot of Jake in this time, all right? Because they haven't saved anything, all right? They just had debts, you know. So when they have no job and they can't get back a job, what they become a, be a, a, a beggar, and a beggar has to line and wait for his own life, right? Because he has to depend on handouts, all right? And be talked to, on, right? So people will bad talk you, and that's what exactly what happens to Jake, you know. We, you know, we know we already have by word as important to the scriptures, right? The curses. Alright, I'll buy it with a proverb. Alright. So let's go back to the video here. Might be time for governments to step in, right? Well, they already have. In fact, they're helping the ultra-rich get even richer. Thanks to a loophole in the U.S.'s coronavirus relief package, the wealthy ended up getting around $1.7 million worth of handouts. And another 133 large companies received $5 billion more from the Treasury. As for the U.K., over $20 billion of government stimulus has already gone straight into the pockets of corporations. For the rest of humanity, it's unfortunate because extreme poverty is only getting closer to home. Between 88 million and 115 million people could fall back into extreme poverty as a result of the pandemic, with an additional increase of between 23 million and 35 million in 2021. So you see the kind of numbers they're talking about here, 88 million to 115 million, right? You know, when, when so many people fall back into poverty, what do you think going to happen, right? What do you think going to happen? Plus they have this... um. This pandemic out, COVID-19, you know, which was make, putting people in fear, putting them in fear, you know. So you two-thirds and, and um, heathen, you know, they're going to be in fear. What they're going to do and if they can't buy anything, they're going to take that chip. So basically, that's how they're going to force, they're going to coerce people and, you know, and basically, as they would look at it, force them to take the chip because they, they think that they have no other um, options, right, to eat and drink. And that's what's going to happen there potentially bringing the total number of new people living in extreme poverty to between 110 million and 150 million. The World Bank defines extreme poverty as living on less than $1.90 a day. So as the ruling class continues to collect billions of dollars in government charity, you have to wonder how exactly society is benefiting as a whole from this degree of inequality. It is a manifest. Society isn't benefiting at all, you know. 
And that's what's happening in this society. This society isn't benefiting from it. Only the elites are benefiting from it, right? Only the elites are benefiting from it. Let's go to our script, our, our quick precept here. On the book of Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1, right? This also, this known, know also that in the last days perilous times shall come on. These are perilous times, right? For men shall be lovers of their own selves, just on what elites, you know, and even some of Jake, you know, who figure they, you know, they're above, they're above the, um, the poverty line, right? Those sell out Jakes, right? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, right? That's, that's, that's Esau for sure, right? Proud and blasphemers, boasters, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, right? Uh, I'll end, I'll stop it there, right? And we'll continue with the video. Manifestation of capitalism. It is how capitalism uh, handles a pandemic. You can see a disproportionate impact. Low-income workers have been laid off, fired, run into unemployment, much more than middle and upper income workers. Capitalist employers are keeping their jobs and the upper, the upper, the upper skilled workers have much larger salaries, so that shows you how wicked the system is, you know, right? How, un how unbalanced the system is, you know? Because if you, if you, if you want to reduce the expenses of a company, first thing you may do is reduce the, you know, the big salaries, right? Yeah, you know, especially if you're top heavy, all right? You have a heavy management structure, all right? So it just shows you. During an economic downturn, but laying off millions of American workers. So you automatically, if you react to a pandemic that way, you worsen the inequality. It's the capitalist system and its operation that is in fact the cause of this growing poverty for which there is no excuse uh, possible. Yeah, there's no excuse possible, right? And they know exactly what they're doing, right? And know they know it worsens the, 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 the um, it widens the gap between the rich and the poor, but that's what they want, alright? That's what they want, alright? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19 and verse 15, alright? Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush may do, alright? So, so there wouldn't be any work in Egypt. Egypt represents America or Babylon the Great, alright? Verse 16 says, In that day Egypt shall be, like, be, should be like unto women. It shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of Yahweh of hosts, which he shaketh over it. And that's what Yahweh Basham Yahweh is doing right now. Shaking his hands, right? So there's no more work. The economy is in shambles. Alright? One more precept. In the book of um, 2nd Ezra 6, verse 22. Alright? And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. Right, the sown places shall be on the sown, right? As well, the busy places, all the stores, a lot of them will be closed down, right? Especially the, the especially the um the people who are low income people, you know, who are the stores, you know, the little moms and pop stores, all those all those little joints, you know. You know, they're on the sown right now. They have, everybody used to be flooding there. No, now is now is it has to close down, right? People who have the economics, the finance to keep it running. Alright, the full storehouses shall be sudden shall suddenly be found empty. And even if you look in the groceries now, you pretty much the groceries becoming empty. Alright, the shelves, they have so many empty shelves right now, right? You know, which is a sign of the famine that's coming. Right? That's a sign of the famine that's coming. Alright, so I think that's the end of the video there. Let me just check here. Yeah, that's the end of the video there. So what I'm gonna do now, you know, I'm gonna go to the to to, to a reference in a book, the book called um, Satan's Angels Exposed, you know, and I'm basically going to show you here how that how um, this was all a plan, you know, in terms of widening the gap between the rich and the poor, right? Because this was all a, either my plan from since in the back in Greek times, right? So let's go to, to this is the book by Salem Coburn, Satan's Angels Exposed, all right? Let's go to page 172. I believe, yeah, page 172, see that page 176, all right, page 172, right, 
This is the Fabian Society and, the sinister, and, the, and its sinister seduction slack here, right? At the bottom of the page here, we'll see a three-level society because Michelle Ruskin and those guys who when, when, the, when the founders of the Illuminati, you know, they, they believe in Plato's, um, Plato's basically theories, okay? So let's take a read here. Plato advocated a three-level structure of society. The ruling class, which is what the elites, the military class, which is their soldiers, right? You know, the Roman Empire have to have soldiers, right? But they have to, ex how else they going to um, extend their, their boundaries and take over people's lands by force, all right? And the worker class, all right? So there you have it. Worker class is what? The ones who are in extreme po poverty. The ones who have to do the menial tasks in society, right? So you see, there's no middle class there, all right? And that's exactly what's happening now. Now remember, Plato did not live in the 20th century. He was a Greek philosopher who lived at the beginning of the 4th century BC, between 427 BC and 347. Yet what he describes as the ideal society is on the verge of being fulfilled. And I wouldn't even say it's on the verge. This book was written in around 1980. It is fulfilled right now. All right? Pretty much as what's happening right now. Plato's philosophy was patterned in part by Th Pythagoras, a philosopher of the 6th century BC. The school of Pythagoras was a communistic aristocracy. Men and women pooling their goods, educated together and offering themselves as guardian rulers of the state. And that's really what they wanted. You know, the man guy was seeing any video about capitalism, but it's also communism. Alright? Alright? John, let's jump down a paragraph. John Ruskin could be considered the, the Plato of his day. One of John's Rus John Ruskin's students was Cecil Rhodes, who lived between 1853 and 1902. Rhodes became a firm believer in the Ruskin theology. And then, this is going into the Rothschild now and how they fi financed it. So, this is the bridge here. Right? This is, how, this is how we can see it came into being, right? With financial support from Lord Rothschild, Cecil Rhodes was able to monopolize the diamond mines of South America, Africa. Right? And this also go, you know, we jump on again, all right? Jump down a paragraph again. These men could not be, could not be considered evil geniuses, as some mentioned in this book. These, well, uh, that's, that's going off. They were, they were evil geniuses, all right? But then, of course, they were evil geniuses, right? You know, because the Lord gave them wisdom, right? You know, the Lord said, thou art wiser than Daniel, right? He gave them that ability to, to you know, to do to the secret society, you know, and to, to scheme, all right? To take crafty counsel, as it were. Alright? So it's not by chance. It isn't by chance that um, this is happening. Alright? This disparity between the rich and the poor. Alright? And COVID-19 was made for that purpose. Alright? So let's go into a couple of scriptures. And then I'll close it out. Um, let's go to the book of... Uh, book of Psalms. Book of Psalms. Oh, sorry, let's go to the book of Proverbs. Let's go to the book of Proverbs first, chapter 11 and verse 3. Right? The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Right? And he's all going to be destroyed. We know that. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteous of, of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Right? The righteous of their right shall deliver them, but the transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. All right? When a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish. Well, the expectation of the elites is going to perish. What do they think is going to happen, right? They think they're going to be successful to, to control fully. You know, the Lord is going to give them a taste and he's going to take it away. All right? And the hope of the unjust men perisheth. The righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked cometh in his stead. All right? So, so the Lord is going to deliver Jacob out of trouble, right? The elect of the nation of Israel, all right? And, and Edomites and the wicked, they're going to be destroyed, all right? They're going to perish. All right, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 69. I'll start at verse 22, all right? All right, Psalms 69 and 22. Let their table become a gum snare before them. And the table is talking about... You know, they, they, where they plan their wickedness, their iniquity, right? Let it become a snare or a trap before them, you know, because the Lord is going to make them make it a trap unto them. 
and that and that which should have been for their welfare let it become a trap so all this all these plans that they have you know COVID 19 you know this you know the disparity between rich and poor that they will rule over everybody and they'll be like gods right you know you know it will become a trap right verse 23 says let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake pour out thine indig indignation upon them and let their wrathful anger take hold of them let their habitation be desolate and let not let none dwell in their tents so they as many lord going to destroy the whole of america you know it's going to be nobody's going to live there only 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 the lizards and the dragons right It'll be dust all right verse 26 says for they persecute him whom they have smitten and they talk to the grief of those whom they have wounded all right and who's that you know that's jake you know they're wicked all right and let's go stuff with one more scripture here um Let's go in the book of James, chapter 5 and verse 1, right? Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. All right? The judgment of your Hashem, your Hashem, right? Your riches are corrupted. All right? These elites, your riches are corrupted. And your garments are not eaten. Your gold and silver is conquered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. All right? And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped tre to get treasure together for the last. Ye who have heaped together, heap treasure together for the last days, right? The Lord is going to destroy them, right? Right, and all that, all the riches will be a, will be a witness against them, right? The rest of the rich of the of the, the riches, you know, the fiat currency and all those things like that, all right? That that will be a witness against them on that day, all right? So all praises unto you, all Bashim, your Shai, Bashim, Rakaku, Dash, right? Wah abad babal shalom.